Voice of the Voter covers election 2009, the Rochester City Council primary race. I'm Bob Smith with Tariq Spence. During this portion, we are welcoming Rochester City Council President Gladys Santiago. And we're glad to have you with us today. Thank you very much for joining us. And Thank I'd like you. to ask you, first of all, in your perspective as the presiding officer of the council, how it's working as a body now and how you would like to see it either move forward in the same direction or maybe change in the next four years? Well, I would like to see it change a little bit. I think we need to question more people that come and see us. Um, we certainly do question the mayor a lot. But we need to question more our constituents. We need to ask in-depth questions. I just came from a meeting that I said, oh my God, we sh I should have known that. But because I didn't ask the proper question, I don't know it. And they, not, they did not feel at ease to let me know what was happening. But now that I know, I will pursue it. I think it's important that our constituents or whomever wishes to talk to us, and I tell you, I'm available in council. My door swings both ways, in and out, and I have tell you, I have seen a lot of people in my office and council uh, with many different problems, not only that the tree is falling or the bushes are falling or the pipes in the, you know, in the street, but personal things, school, education, their children. I know you probably have heard this before. That's still a concern. Employment. Well, we all are suffering from lack of employment, the lack of you know, whether it's food, whether it's health care, health care is a hot issue. And I think we need to really spread more around it. And so I have been talking to the blues. With me, I don't wait till you call me all the time. I just pick up the phone and say, hey, um, Jesus, this is what came to me. Let's talk. Let's meet. And I've never had so many lunches in my life. Well, there's a, a lot being done with city council, and you guys are always communicating, finding out what's going on. One of the things you mentioned was schools mm -hmm. and uh, school safety and the importance of it. Is there any, are you open on city council to working closer with the school board, being a part of one of their committees, working together, maybe talking a little bit more and communicating to your needs and wants on council and their needs and wants on school board? We should always be open to the city school board, to the education of our children. Yes, we have talked about that, we have met. I have spoken to Malik Evans about that and we continue to pursue that and we will. We should, as I said, we should always be concerned about our children that are in school, those that are graduating, those that are not graduating, those that are graduating, where are they going on to? And those that are not graduating, por qué? Which means, why not? So we need to be much more tentative to that. I mean, we might have full agendas, but when it comes to the education of our children, I'm a great grandmother, I'll tell you, believe it or not. And I'm concerned about my kids. I'm concerned about the neighborhood kids. I'm concerned about our young people. When I hear the radio in the morning, if somebody has shot somebody or somebody, they found their body, you know, that is to me like if it was my child. I feel it in my heart. And I say, well, dear Lord, you know, we must look at it. We must study the situation more. Of course, there the, are many people who believe that if we're going to get the best results for our kids, City Hall has to take a lot more direct role in supervising, maybe even running the schools. There are people who say, like Mayor Duffy, that he ought to be able to appoint members to the school board. Others go so far as to say that the mayor ought to be able to appoint the school superintendent and the city council ought to be de facto school board with full control over policy and budget, like they have in New York City. How would you feel about a change that drastic? Is it necessary or would you stop short of it? I would tell you sincerely that I would stop. I would have to study it. I'm not saying it's impossible. But I would not want city council or the city to run the school board. I believe it's a separate entity and it should remain as that. And they should be able to vote in their people like they do what they, 
what they have been doing for years, uh, the school board should be independent from us, that we should be working closer, yes. That we should maybe share in committees, yes. But taking them over and running them, I don't think so. That we might want to enhance their finance office, that we might want to enhance any part of it, we can. You know, it depends on them also. They have a superintendent. That is quite bright. And I think, you know, out of all due respect to him and to, you know, the teachers, that we need to look at that, but not take them over. It's not my philosophy. What about the quality of life for young people? You talked about how painful it is to uh, read the news stories of another young people lost. What do you think council's job is in to try and improve the lives, not just in school, but out of school, too? It is very, um, very sad when we lose a young person to death, number one, that we, we need, and again, I repeat what I have. I have a young grandson, oh, young. he fought in, in the war now, but we need to have more jobs for our young people. We need to help them aspire what they want to reach, what they want to do. Nothing is impossible. We make it impossible at times. You know, it could be the parent, it could be the young person themselves. And I tell, when I talk to young people, I said, nobody can hold you behind, only yourself, your parents. We need to get also more involved with parents. See, I believe in parents. Some of us do not. I believe the parents have the responsibility of talking to Johnny or reprimanding Johnny or Joanne, whatever, to pay attention, to be respectful. Stay off the streets, you know, and if they're at the, in the street when they're not supposed to, reprimand them. There's consequences to everything in life, and there's consequences for young people too. And let me tell you, have them been there and done that. Should City Council go back and retool the youth curfew law, which got struck down by the Court of Appeals, rework it so that it can pass a court challenge and put it back in effect? Yes. I was very sad to hear that we have broken the law with the curfew that way. At least the curfew from what I saw of it, and because I talked to young people, gave some sort of guarantee of, of protection. Um, you have to stay off the street because if you're not off the street, you, know, you get taken away you know, by the police because they have that responsibility. When we dropped that, that, that we were not able to do it, you know, I felt, oh dear, this is not a good thing. And it isn't. Because summer's here and pretty soon school is gonna start again. And, and I walk the streets, believe it or not. I walk our streets. And I say, Mira, what are you doing outside? Go home. And I do. So they need, it needs to be refined, for a better word. Yes. What are your thoughts on uh, the surveillance cameras that monitor some of the busier streets of Rochester when it comes to criminal activity? Would you like to see more of that? Uh, would you like to see exactly how it, effective it's being before you judge on whether we should get more or less or if it's needed at all? Well, I like to see how effective it has been. Personally, I love it because I go through some of those streets that are not good. And I see the, the hanky-panky, for a better word, what goes on. I've seen the drug deals. I've seen where some young women, you know, just walked all the way around so they don't have to go through those uh, paths, for a better word. I don't know if I would go through them, but I ride through them against my children's uh, will, but I do. I will not back out, and I'd like to see more of them. Our thanks to Rochester City Council President Gladys Santiago, who is running in the upcoming primary election for another term on City Council, joining us as part of the Voice of the Voter. With Tariq Spence, I'm Bob Smith.